Well, Rico, I, I did want to, to at least magnify something today, and that was the number 237. Why would I be magnifying 237? 237. Something, something, receiving something. <laughs> something about receiving something, yards. Something, something, big numbers, something. Yes, that is a lot of receiving yards. That is a decent amount. At a place like at Nebraska where, um, you know, receiving yards haven't necessarily been uh, the go-to for nebraska football historically mm -hmm. it's kind of interesting because i think when you think of the best wide receivers and i know you can argue that johnny was a wing back or you know to carries two, whatever you want to you say. could put him in the running back discussion the punt return discussion the wide receiver discussion yeah. but i think if you talk about the best wide receivers at nebraska <clears throat> you start the list with johnny rogers you have irving Ry or fryer at number two mm -hmm. and then i think you have a big argument for number three i don't know if there is an obvious number three um, and I think that Trey Palmer, even if he's here for just a year mm -hmm. with that game that he put up, uh, I think he might inch his way into the discussion. Now there's all sorts of talk about, you know, is he going to leave or all this stuff? I, I don't, it was one game. It was, it yeah. was, but it was, I mean, if he sets the receptions record, the receiving yards record, like if, if he sets multiple records in one season at Nebraska, I mean, he has to be mentioned with the the greats of nebraska receivers it doesn't matter if it's one season it's the greatest season a receiver has had as as a nebraska cornhusker so he you would have to keep his name mentioned among the greats and i mean he won't win a heisman because that's just not going to happen for for trey palm i was going to say for a receiver even though we had a receiver win one yeah. a couple years ago maybe, yeah. um but it, he's not going to win a heisman but is there any way in your mind at least that he could take over the best receiver in nebraska history uh as far as all the numbers i think that he pretty much can um and it's, it's kind of fun to run down now it is interesting to note too with nebraska football a lot of the top half or excuse me like the the the, the top record holders in nebraska at wide receiver um, like the top tens might not necessarily be the best players that ever played at Nebraska, right? Just got a lot of, a lot of targets. We started passing the ball a lot. Uh, yeah, there you was know. a time. <laughs> right. After there, was Frank a, Solid, there was a switch. Yeah, mentality. there wasn't much passing for a long time. And, and when there was, you know, back in the 70s or, you know, before that, it was, um, you know, the game had changed. Mm -hmm. and so, I mean, what was heavy passing back then was not the same as was now. So I remember when, when they made the switch and like Terrence Nunn, had a record mm. and Nate Swift had the record. Do you love me some Terrence Nunn? <laughs> Big Terrence Nunn guy. Yeah. And we all Nate like Swift always mentioned among the receiving. We greats. can like Terrence Nunn as much as we want. He's probably at most schools, not one of the best receivers of all time. Probably not. And I don't think he is at Nebraska either. He just kind of had the records there. So when you run through it, it's the names you can remember. And some of these guys are really good. I think when you, when you do start to have the argument, um, I think you could, you, a case could be made for, Kenny Bell. I think a case could be made for Stanley Morgan or Jordan Westerkamp. I Nate mean, Swift. Yeah, I mean Nate he's Swift. he's up there. He's he's always mentioned. I don't know about greatest, but he's always mentioned up there. He's got to be Stanley Morgan. Um, was probably the number three after the first two that you mentioned, John Rogers and Irving Fryer. Um, I think Stanley Morgan kind of took he's over here. that That's number. I think he her. kind of took over that number three spot, especially being the only thousand yard receiver in Nebraska history is what a thousand and five yards. In a season. And four, yeah. Like it was just like barely but he over has a thousand, the number two spot it. at nine eighty six as well. Yep. Just never played on winning teams. JD Spielman, if he would have stayed yeah, another did, year, yeah. like he, he was right on the cusp he of breaking like all of the records right. for Nebraska receivers. Um, he didn't, he didn't end up staying. And, um, but he, you know, in the in the short amount of time that he was here at Nebraska, I mean, he he put up some massive numbers. How crazy is it? Is is this the fifth highest um, receiving yardage total in a game? Is Matt Davidson at Nebraska with 167? That's that's wild. That's like especially <laughs> at a time where they weren't really throwing. Like he well, put right. in a time where the ball wasn't being slung around the yard all that much. Well, that was a good day for him against Texas A and M. He also had a pretty good day against Northwestern, uh, his final game. But uh, and he was a solid wide receiver. But that's that's my point though is that you know if you put a Matt Davidson, um, you know there's probably better examples um, from you know the heydays. Um, and, and, and put them on a passing team, you know, who knows what they could have done. Um, but even still, after all this time, after switching, you know, from a run heavy scheme after 2003, it's been, it's been 19 years or whatever it is. And still the top five is Matt Davidson, yeah. 167. <laughs> it's like 167. That's like a, 
let's just see another day in the Pac-12. Yeah, and I mean, there's there's been some explosive offenses here at Nebraska. There's been some really good receivers here at Nebraska, and for some reason or another, there's only been one thousand yard receiver. It, it it's almost as if they they uh, I don't know about do a really good job of spreading the ball out, but they just spread the ball out to a bunch of different people, or you know, it seems like lately injuries have been taking taking um, players out of contention for setting all kinds of records. And it's, it's very unfortunate, but Nebraska's like track record with receivers just hasn't really been the greatest. I mean, you, you had at one point, I, I believe there was a, there was a receiving room with Kenny Bell, um, Quincy and then, oh, yeah. um, uh, Oh my gosh. I can't remember his name. He uh, had the big catch against Michigan state. Oh, Jamal Turner. No, 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 no. no, no. Uh, oh, Brandon Riley. Brandon Riley. Yeah. He out of bounds, inbounds, whatever. Yeah. Like that. They, like it was a. It was a crazy stacked. Res- Jordan Westerkamp might have been like a freshman at the time or something. Yeah. Like a crazy stacked receiver room, and not much came from it. And then you look back on it, and and each one of them had their time in the sun for Nebraska, but none of them really had like that. That you know crazy like this is your number one receiver this is your all conference receiver it was just like oh yeah that's your that's your go-to guy you know it, it'll catch a few passes and, and score like a touchdown or or two every once in well, a while you're like, still you know, being overshadowed this, by amir abdullah yeah you're being Taylor like martinez man. no matter and it's crazy because now everybody wants to run the ball back when you had great receivers it seems as if you were maybe running the ball more because you had great running backs as well yeah and now at a time where you have two really good you know a receiver and a running back you're not running it, you're passing it. And and now we're talking about great receivers. <laughs> well, and I think that is a concern moving forward for Nebraska this year is the, the running game that they're going to be able to get, uh, get going. Uh, I think, you know, what they had early on with Anthony Grant was nice. Um, I can't remember. He's probably at like 650 or something. At something this point. like that. I mean, he's still like still probably going to get a thousand, but it's going to be tough. Let's I, I don't know if he's going to have too many hundred yard games left. Um, unless they can no. fix something during this bye week, but um, m- more of it is, and it's not the even opponents they're going to play. Yeah, it's not even on the offensive line, even though you know we, we talk about that and how how much they've been struggling. But really, it's it's the level of competition that's going to ramp up in terms of of rush rushing defenses that Nebraska is going to face. He is currently at six hundred and eighty two yards. Mm-hmm. He is fifteenth in the nation. Right behind Mo Ibrahim, he's twelve yards behind Mo Ibrahim, who's missed a little bit of time. Um, <laughs> yeah. I, I who's missed like two games. Yeah, and if they got at one time was up, you know, five, uh, you know, up at number five. I and, and I do think Braylon that- Allen's up at seven fifty-seven, and so huh, I don't like this. Um, three of the next running backs that you're going to face. So next week's running back, um, the week after, the week at like. All, four of the next five <laughs> running backs you're going to face are in the top 15. Yeah. Chase Brown's number one at 1,050. He's at 1,000 yards already. Yeah. Uh, Blake Corm's number two at 901. Oh, well, there you go. Uh, Braylon Allen is number 10 at 757. And Mo Ibrahim is number 14 at 694. Those are four of the next five running backs you face. Try to find an Iowa guy. Okay. <laughs> They're not, they Let's have the see. worst offense in the nation. That they might do. be they quite do. difficult to find. Adrian Martinez is 36. Hey, there you go. That's interesting. Um, there might be a tight end before there's an Iowa. Okay, so he is not in the top fifty. <laughs> no. So let's let's see how far back we have to go to find an Iowa to to, to find the next. They're the, the next outlier. Five running the, backs of, that yeah, you, the you have to face. The tough teams you have left. Iowa might not be the well, toughest. Western Michigan's logo is so much bigger than everybody else's. <laughs> it's kind of funny. Uh, not in the top hundred. Okay, no, yeah. So yeah, it's not. not yeah, right. So I mean, I was gonna going to run the ball, maybe not with a lot of success. Although we thought Purdue wasn't going to run with a lot of success, and look what happened yeah. there. So can't really talk much about that. It's very strange how teams that don't seem to do one thing, uh, like uh, one offensive thing or or a defensive thing, very well, seem to do really well in that aspect when they play nebraska the remedy is nebraska it really is it's unfortunate so (laughs) i've seen like three other michigan running backs i still haven't seen an (laughs) iowa running back i feel like i might have just missed him might be spencer petra yeah no i definitely just missed him because i'm in negative i'm at 200 259 (laughs) yards it's a dude from mississippi state 